to Terenzi for three. Taylor. Taylor's going to finish it. Watford for the win. Yes. Yes. What's going on, y'all? Michael Beasy here coming to you from the Sports Corner. Yes, I have finally come out with my own sports show. I've been dying to do this. It's a lifelong dream, really. I mean, ESPN didn't want to hire me, so I got to do this shit myself. And that's fine and dandy, because I love talking sports. I love talking IU, Colts, Pacers, Indiana sports in general. And I do have a wide range of sports knowledge from basketball, football, baseball, track and field, wrestling, professional wrestling. UFC, boxing. I watch a lot of different things. And more than anything, I'm going to tell you the truth on how I feel about something. More than anything. And yes, when I talk Indiana sports, I'm going to be emotional. That's just what I am. I'm an Indiana fan. I'm a Hoosier fan. That's what we do. We're emotional fucking people. It's just what we are as Hoosiers. Uh, if you've ever met an Indiana fan in your life, if you've never been to Indiana, just know that we're emotional. Point blank period. That's all you got to know about us. You say something the wrong way to us about the Colts, it's going to rub us the wrong way. You say something the wrong way to us about the Hoosiers, it's going to rub us the wrong way. Oh, you didn't like Bobby Knight? Well, fuck you. No, no, seriously, fuck you. You didn't like Bobby? He choked Neil Reed. Yeah, I was proud of it. Fuck you, fuck you, and fuck Neil Reed. Literally, that's how the shit goes. That's all I'm saying. The show's going to be broken down into four segments. Basically, what's going to happen, the first segment, tip off. The second segment, halftime. The third segment, weekly updates, which is going to consist of covering the Colts, IU, and the Pacers. We don't do Purdue shit here. If you come here to hear about Purdue, it ain't going to be good. I don't fuck with them. Period. No, I'm being for real. Period. And as you can see, I did graduate from Butler. But as for the pro basketball program this year, they kind of suck. They've been, they've been on the downfall for a while now. Time to fire Laval Jordan and call it a day. So we're not going to cover Butler either until maybe tournament time if they pull something out of their ass. But honestly, they're not going to pull nothing out of their ass this year. They're not very good. They don't have a star player that can take over. They got Harris, but Harris can only do so much. For real. He can score up and down. He's not consistent enough. And it's just not going to work out. It's not going to work out in Big East play. They're going to be lucky to finish... Four games under 500. That's how bad they're going to be. Literally. But yeah. And then the final segment is going to be game winners. And basically what game winners is, is I'm going to predict games. And this episode, since the wild card, NFL wild card starts this weekend, I'm going to predict the wild card games. And y'all can bet on it and I can win you some money. So let's do this. Let's jump into the episode. Count the 30, watch the ESPN. Yes, yeah, game time. Shot like Curry. I just hit two outs with the same now. Welcome to Breaking News. Let's jump into some headlines. Headline number one, Texas Tech defeats Baylor. Number one, Baylor has gone down. Baylor was 15 and oh, they led by as many as 15 points at home. The Red Raiders went on the road and stole one. I caught some of this game last night actually. It's pretty interesting. The first half, they were down 15 late in the first half, but before halftime, they made a run and cut it to two. I mean, I, that's when I said, I said, I think Texas Tech might be able to pull the upset tonight. And you know what else that means? Indiana's 1976 undefeated streak is still alive. Oh, yeah. Number two, Andrew Luck returns to the house that Peyton built. You son of a bitch. Excuse my French, but Andrew can kiss my ass. Yeah, I mean, he... Uh, Look at him. He looks happy, though. He's very skinny. He looks like he hasn't been in the gym in two years, like literally since he retired. Looks like he has been at home being a dad. I, I can't even be mad at him. I get it, I guess. It is what it is. But you know what's interesting? I, I found this fact out. I was thinking this morning. And Carson Wentz has done what Andrew Luck has never done. Carson Wentz beat the Patriots this year as a Colt. The damn is damn. Last headline, unfortunately, I got to eat some crow. 
The Crimson Tide fell to Georgia. Georgia won its first national title in 40 years. Look, Alabama's won like six national titles. They were going for seven in the last 12 years. I mean, it's dominance. Somebody else has to win. I mean, we got to let somebody win some year. So that's what's happening here. And, I mean, Alabama played hard last night. They took it all the way down. Okay, there's six minutes to go, or seven minutes to go. Sets and business gets, fumble, or gets hit, fumbles it. Alabama recovers. Alabama takes the ball, scores a touchdown, takes the lead. And then next drive, Georgia comes right down the field and scores a touchdown. Alabama gets the ball back, only has about five minutes and some change. All they need is three down by one, and they can't get it. Throw a pick six, and then it's a ball game. I swear, there's some games that just will stick with you for the rest of your life. Like, there's the Colts versus Saints game, the Super Bowl. I've never gotten over it. I never will get over it. Fuck the Saints, the Aints, and Drew Brees, and everything his little pony rode in on. Fuck it. Let's go. That done made me mad. Let's go to halftime. I thought the game was over for me, and then Coach asked me if I was ready to play. Syracuse made a big run and gotten themselves back into the game. And I said, yes, I'm ready to play. He said, well, you have a couple of minutes to go in and play. If you haven't done anything in a couple of minutes, I'm taking you out and I can't use you. So I figured being at home in Baton Rouge, where I'm from, with all the family there, I better do something to stay on the floor. I got in there and started playing and things started to open up and I started to make plays. The strangest thing was that I was able to go back into the game and I didn't see anyone in the arena. Strange as it may sound, I didn't see anyone on the floor. I was in the arena on the floor by myself playing. And I played as if I was outside playing somewhere. I had all the time in the world to make the right pass, all the time in the world to make the right shot, the right decision. It was what athletes talk about being in the zone you don't really ever get to that place again but i guess that's because i felt like i was playing by myself i didn't hear anything else again until the final shot when i heard this explosion of noise and that kind of brought me back to reality all the way and there's bobby knight moving on into history weekly update Welcome to Weekly Updates. Uh, the first team we're going to cover today is the Hoosiers. So the Hoosiers are 12-3 and now. They beat Minnesota this past Sunday, 73-60. to Yes, it started sluggish early. However, the Hoosiers got together. The defense buckled down, and they gave Minnesota that work. I mean, that's just what they do. I use defense is number one in the Big Ten this year, number two in the NCAA. I use defense is what is winning games right now. Why? Because the offense ain't even isn't even gelling yet. Because Woodson hasn't even implemented it yet. Implemented it yet. And that's what's interesting about it. Woodson comes from the NBA. This man has a lot of people who respect him. I mean, every person I've heard talk about Mike, Mike Woodson had something good to say about him. There was even a video I had saw of him because he was coaching the Knicks. And um, when he got hired as the IU coach, he had showed up to the Knicks game later that night because he had obviously didn't have the, he had resigned from the Knicks position. But he was at the game, and they all every player from the Knicks came out there to him and shook his hand and hugged him on the sideline before the game. It was really cool to see. that. I mean, that's respect. What coach gets that? What, what coach gets that type of admiration? You know what I mean? It's special. And TJG, TJD, Trace Jackson Davis. I totally butchered that name right there. That's dyslexia kicking in right there. But, or speech impediment, however you want to put it. But Trace has been doing his thing. I mean, double double machine. Race, nasty on the boards. The better, the more race scores, the better for the team because his energy just helps a lot. And, my biggest takeaway is Xavier Johnson. If he plays within himself like he did against Minnesota, you can be really good. A really good point guard can get you a lot of places, especially in the NCAA tournament. It can take you all the way to the NCAA title. 
Remember Sheldon Mack without Gordon Hayward? A good port guard can take you all the way there. I mean, in Trace, bruh, Trace can take you all the way there. He is a top five pick. Point blank period. It's just what it is. It's what it is. I use shooters need to get more involved, though. That's one thing I am concerned about because they do have shooters. Miller Cop can shoot the ball. Parker Stewart can shoot the ball. Let him shoot him. Anthony Leo can shoot the ball. Hell, Michael Dirk can even hit a couple every now and again. Jordan Geromino, he is a energy guy. Let the energy guys play more, Mike. I feel like on the road, since IU hasn't won on the road, and they are going to Iowa Thursday night at 9 p.m. Just a quick plug there. But because they're going to Iowa, they need to get the energy guys involved. When the energy guys get involved, IU wins. It's just how it goes. And especially on the road, you got to get points where you're not used to getting points from. So that means Anthony Leo needs to get more minutes. He needs to get about four points. Michael Durr, more minutes, needs to get about six to eight points. Jordan Dromino, 10 points. Those bench guys, those role players need to get minutes and they need to score points for us to win a game at Iowa. Granted, Iowa is not that same team either. They're not, they don't have the big boy down low no more. So, don't take them lightly either. Winning games on the road in the Big Ten is not easy. It don't matter who you play, especially when it's the Indiana Hoosiers. IU has problems going to Nebraska. I mean, it's what it's been in the past. I don't know about this year. But, I mean, we lost to Penn State already. And I don't give a fuck what year it is. Losing to Penn State anytime on the road at home, unacceptable. Shit pissed me off. But I'll let it slide for now because we're 12-3. and three. But we better beat Iowa. Or y'all will be hearing a very pissed off me next episode. I don't want to jump into the Colts quite yet. So let's jump into the Pacers. So the Pacers are struggling really fucking bad. I mean, it's... It's tough to watch. They're they're very fucking miserable to watch. Like, I got a lot of cigarette for this. They're they're hard to watch. And I want to look into the camera and I want to say this very fucking clearly. So, y'all hear me. The Pacers need to fire every fucking butt. Fire them all. Trade everybody. Start over. It, it, It is what it is. Like, we've been rebuilding since Paul left. And Domas is good. And maybe you build around Domas. But everybody else can fucking bounce except for Domas and Duarte can stay. Everybody else can go. TJ Warren, he ain't played in I don't know how long. They believe in this man. He, he don't even play. Yeah, TJ's good. He don't play. It's something about players that don't play and people like, oh, they're that good. So, like... That's why the Pacers aren't good. No, the Pacers aren't good because the Pacers aren't fucking good. Malcolm Brogdon is fucking boring. He's boring. This is me when I watch Malcolm Brogdon. Literally, he puts me to fucking sleep. He's like watching Anthony Johnson back in the day. I don't know if y'all remember Anthony Johnson used to play on the Pacers. He was boring as fuck. The dude would drop 40 out of nowhere, though. But he was boring as fuck to watch. He was fat and he was slow. I'm not saying Brockton's fat and slow. I'm just saying he's slow. He definitely slow. I mean, the man can score, but he's he's just boring. He puts me to fucking sleep. And they signed Lance to 10 days. This is They signed Lance to his second 10 day. He does this in Boston last night. Lance, I mean, yeah, Lance is bringing new life into the franchise. But it's a bad day. We know what needs to happen here, y'all. They're throwing smoke grenades at us. Hell, fire Carlisle. He he getting paid big money. Carlisle making millions. The Pacers have lost nine games by four points or less. They're one in nine in games decided by four points or less. One in nine. That's coaching. Like, Carlisle isn't putting the players in position to win the game. That's coaching. Lakers fired Mike Brown after 10 games. Fired Dan Tony after 20. I mean, I'm just saying. you got to make decisions sometimes. I ain't trying to be a negative Nancy, but I, I'm sick of watching the Pacers fucking lose. When I was growing up as a kid, the Pacers were successful. The Colts sucked. The Pacers were the successful franchise in the city. That's why Conseco Fieldhouse, Gamebridge Fieldhouse, that's why it was built. It was built way before Lucas Oil. You know why? Because the Pacers were fucking successful. 
They lost to the Lakers in the NBA Finals. If they didn't meet Shaq and Kobe in the Finals and face the fucking Spurs or something like that, they would have won. But fuck, ain't nobody beating Shaq and Kobe. <laughs> nobody could beat them in the Finals, man. It was unfair. I mean, yeah, granted, the Pistons ended up beating them eventually, but that was because Gary Payton and Carmen Lowe was old. Old as fuck. Old as dirt. Got some old men out there playing against these fucking roughnecks. So some fucking goons. I don't know, man. It's just... It sucks being a Pacer fan sometimes. It sucks being an Indiana fan. And that's what brings me to the Indianapolis fucking Colts. Let me relight this. Play these highlights. How fucking... They make Trevor Lawrence look like Joe fucking Montana is beyond me, bro. Like, Lawrence has sucked all season. The, the, the man has done nothing. You had a wide open sack. Wide open sack right there. And nah. Bubble around. You should have sacked this man right there. Nah. It, you know what happened? This motherfucker throws a touchdown pass. <laughs> That's the story of the Colts Sunday. I ain't even showing Carson Wentz. What highlights is there to show? This man getting sacked. This man flicking the ball to people. I swear to God, if I see Carson Wentz flick another fucking ball. Like, I'm so tired of seeing Carson Wentz flick balls. I, I mean, they either end up interceptions, fumbles, incompletions, or near interceptions, fumbles, and incompletions. <laughs> or negative plays. Literally, that's what Carson Wentz does for the Indianapolis Colts. He fucks shit up. Like, you, you, you want to know who Carson Wentz is? He's Steve Urkel. The man has a great heart. He's a great person. But he just fucks up. He'll get the girl. But he's going to fuck some shit up. <laughs> it's, just, it's just what's going to happen. He's red. I ain't got nothing against red. But he's going to fuck some shit up. It's just... It's, it's wild to me. It, he, I can't even call him the red firecracker because that's Andy Dalton's name. I got to call him the dud. Because he's a dud. Yeah, he was good in Philly. Yeah, you know why he was good in Philly? Because teams didn't know who he was then. He wasn't figured out. It was, what, his uh, second year in the league? He wasn't scouted out like that by then. Boys didn't figure him out. And then they figured his ass out. And then on to the next thing, Frank fucking Wright. He signed till 2026. I understand we can't find Frank. I get it. I fucking get it. Because somebody needs to put his ass in check. Point blank. Period. Chris Bauer needs to go hire a fucking special assistant. Bring them in. Stand right next to this motherfucker on the sideline. And say, every time Frank's fucking up. That little nine. That little. Hey. Hand me the playbook. And then he just hands the playbook over. Frank goes and stands over there. This dude calls the plays. Seriously. It's got to be done. Frank needs to get put that fucking play sheet down. He gets two in his head too fucking much. I, I don't understand it. It drives me fucking insane, mad. And I just don't understand it. I really fucking don't. Like, the Colts are... The Colts should be in the playoffs. They, they were hot. They had won fucking seven to eight. They were one of the hottest teams in the league. They had to win three of the last four to get in. Two weeks ago, they were a 99% chance of getting the playoffs. Saturday, 99% chance of getting the playoffs. Guess what they are? Eliminated from the playoffs because they couldn't beat the worst team in the fucking NFL. It's fucking sad. It's depressing to be a Colts fan. It's going to be a long, long offseason. And there better be some fucking changes. And that's all I'm going to say about that. And I'm going to move on to my next segment. Miller with the fake and the heave. It's on line. Oh! <laughs> off the scoreboard, off the glass, nothing but net. Welcome to Game Winners. So we got the Steelers versus the Chiefs. So word on the street, Steelers defense ranked 21st in scoring, 22 in points allowed. Since week 14, Mahomes has thrown 12 touchdowns, one pick. Close game, but it's not going to be that close. I feel like Roethlisberger does have a chance, though. I mean, Big Ben always have a chance. It's his going away party. It's in Kansas City. I'm not sure what the weather's going to be like. It could be anything. 
but I think it's going to be a blowout. 41-17 Chiefs. We got the Pats, the Bills. Um, Josh Allen has played well against the Patriots last matchup against New England. He had 314 yards, three touchdowns, and the Bills rushed for 114 yards. So they got a lot of production on the ground. I think they went over 400 and some yards total offense at Gillette Stadium. Uh, I don't see Belichick allowing that to happen in a playoff game. Granted, though, this is in Buffalo. The weather is going to be fucking wild and sure it's going to be snowy. I think I'm going to give this to the Patriots. I think I originally picked the Bills to win this, but I think I'm going to pick the Patriots. I think I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go Pats 27-23. There's a fire going on right here. That's a bad thing. Don't smoke, kids. Smoking's bad for your lungs. All right, next game. It's the first, cl- it's the first game of the weekend. It's the 1 o'clock game on Saturday. It's Cincinnati and the Raiders. Cincinnati has not won a playoff game since 1990. They have two young guns, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. I believe that they're going to wax the Raiders' ass. The Raiders haven't had a coach in fucking, what, seven weeks, whatever it's been. I I guess their assistant coach, I'm not sure what his fucking name is. They say he's going to end up being the head coach, but I doubt it. I I don't see that happening. I see uh, Mark Davis going out and hiring a big-time coach, and it's definitely not that guy that's a coach now. Even though ESPN says otherwise. I don't believe them. ESPN, fuck you, you suck. I don't think you're right. Um, And fuck you for not hiring me. Also, I believe Cincinnati wins this one going away. First playoff drought ended since 1990. Cincinnati wins 38-17. Next up, we got the Cowboys and the Niners. Cowboys are my favorite. Um, Cowboys are number one ranked scoring offense right now. The 49ers are ranked fifth in passing defense and eighth in rushing defense. Cowboys, to win this game, they have to get out to a fast start. They cannot get out early, slow starts. Like, that's what they are known for in the playoffs is getting out slow, making big fucking mistakes, like fumbling the ball for interception or fumbling the ball for a touchdown. Uh, getting intercepted for touchdowns. That's what happens. I mean, it really does. Every fucking time, they're down like 21-0 at the end of the first quarter. Like, God damn. 21-3. 21-6 at halftime. 28-5. 28-13. You know, it, it, it's, it's fucking wild. 28-13. It, it is what it is. But that's how the Cowboys start games, and that's how they cannot start this game. Cowboys need to get out fast and in a hurry. Get after Garoppolo. I got faith in that defense. I believe the Cowboys will beat the shit out of the Niners, honestly. 37-21. The next game on the agenda is at Rams-Cardinals. So Matthew Stafford is 0-3 in the playoffs. He has been in the league for 13 seasons. Only been to the playoffs three times. This will be his fourth. Granted, he did play for the Lions the previous three times. Lions are cursed. Matthew Stafford, I'm sorry that curse is going to follow with you. I believe that... It's not going to follow you forever, though. I changed my mind. At first, I was going to go with the Cardinals and Kyler Murray because I had faith in them, but the Colts beat the Cardinals two weeks ago. Cardinals had to win a pressure game there yesterday, but nah. I got to go with, what did I say? Yeah, Uh, I'll go with the Rams, 41-31. Rams, 41-31. You can book that. Rams, 41-31. Book it. And then the last game, uh, Tampa Bay and the Eagles. I saved this one for last, even though it's not the last game. This is on Sunday, I believe. I could be wrong. I'm doing this shit off the top of my head right now, y'all. This is what I'm doing. This is my podcast. I can do what I want. But this Philly-Tampa Bay matchup is really interesting because the Buccaneers are down... A receiving core. And Philly has the number one ranked rushing offense in the league. And, I mean, the first game was close. Philly lost by four, I believe. It was a close one. It came down to the... It didn't come down to the wire. I think it was more like a come, not a comeback. It was late scoring. Tom Brady threw for 297. Two touchdowns and a pick. Granted, a lot of production came from Godwin and Fournette. Mike Evans only had two catches for 37 yards. 
Antonio Brown was the leading receiver in that game. He had over 95 yards and he had one of those touchdowns. So there's no Antonio Brown anymore, obviously. So it's, this might be a more difficult game. The Eagles have a better team than people realize, and they have a very stingy defense. And Tom might be in for a barn burner. I'm going to say this one might be more low scoring than anything. I'm going to, I'll give it to Brady, but it's going to be close. I, I, I'll say 20 to 19. 20 to 19. Bet, y'all. Thank y'all for watching the Sports Corner. I hope y'all really enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment. Again, like, subscribe, share, comment. It was a pleasure. Um, before I get out of here, I love to end things. Whatever show I'm doing with the quote, be so good with the quote. And I love to end things. And before I get out of here, I love to end things with a quote. You are the artist of your own masterpiece. Don't hand the paintbrush to anybody else. I don't know who said that. I just kind of made that up. Until next time, y'all. Peace.